Sexy Dean Sainz. Wow, I'm so happy that you guys all subscribe, share all the views that I got in this channel. So, me, with all my best, my energy, I'm going to give you the best of the best of the recipe in this world. With no secret, niente segreti, amici miei. Thank you so much for watching from my next video, Jacopelli. Today, I'm going to show you something very special and I know that it's gonna help you so much because I'm going to do this recipe for the house for in American, wait, American uh, measurements. Yes, American measurements. Uh, so, but the most important thing is that today I'm going to show you how to make uh, the pizza dough Neapolitan style for the house with the most common flour in the USA. Yes, how to make the best pizza in your house with the most common flour in the world. This is my first time that I'm gonna do this. I never try it, but all the time I do videos straight we never try it. So together we're gonna be able to see today the result of this flour. So my goal today is that I'm gonna show you how to make the best pizza that you ever made in your house with the most common flour. Because this flour you can find it everywhere. They've been in business for, it says right here, for over 135 years. And the most important thing is that today, finally, I'm gonna do it in cups. Because so many comments of you, they're asking me, how is it in cups? So my goal is to make always the things very simple and easy to make the best product. Unfortunately, this, uh, uh, this situation of this uh, coronavirus is keeping us home. Stay safe, please. And, uh, I have to make some uh, new recipe for you. So this week is gonna be full of recipe. And uh, this way, if you're at home, try this. This is, I mean, it's the common flour, so you can find this everywhere, for sure. And uh, also, I'm gonna do it with the most common, uh, uh, most common yeast, dry yeast, of course. Not the job. I'm gonna do it with the dry yeast because uh, it's easy to find. So. Hopefully this video will be helpful for you. Hopefully you're gonna make the best pizza with me and let's go together and see how to make the dough and uh, let's see the results of this uh, pizza. Of course, I'm not gonna cook in this oven, but after we make the dough, I'm gonna go home and making the cooking part in my house. Straight. Thank you so much. Leave a like, thumbs up and subscribe. Shoo. Let's see what we need for this recipe. The first thing, four cups of uh, room temperature water one package of uh, gold of the most common flour and this is uh, basically is 32 ounces dry yeast honey and sea salt very simple let's start okay first thing to do is uh, we need to create our yeast the most natural as possible. So we are going to create the polish, is a pre-fermented dough. Six teaspoon of room temperature water, the dry yeast, I suggest to buy one kit like this, and we are going to use one fourth of a teaspoon of yeast. So we're gonna place it in the, in the water, four teaspoon of uh, the same bag. So we're gonna put away one, Let's place, let's save the flour on the side because we're gonna use it for the, for the dough tomorrow. We get a spoon and we're gonna uh, mix it up. Here you go, how you find uh, the polish. And we're gonna close it with uh, some plastic wrap, really good. And we're gonna let it rest overnight in the fridge. Let's put it back in the fridge and uh, let's wait. Let's go to sleep and let's wake up, voila. And here you go guys, our polish is ready, nice and fermented. Look at this, voila. Bang it a couple of times and you'll see all the air is gonna come out. So we get back the, our spoon, we mix it up a little bit. Like you can see, it's full of air, voila. We need 
four cups of room temperature water. So we get the, the honey, we're gonna put it in the water, first of all, just like that. The second thing is uh, we have to place our yeast in the water. So now we're gonna get our flour. Of course, we took out uh, the flour to make the polish. And uh, so we're gonna go ahead with the same uh, amount of flour and we're gonna go ahead and add the only half amount of the flour. With the spoon, help you with uh, putting together. Now that we add the half amount, we're gonna put it on the side and try to mix up for about, again, one to two minutes. Done. We let it rest for about five minutes. Always just like that, five minutes, and then and then we're gonna add our salt. Okay, five minutes passed by. Now it's time to add our salt, and we're gonna add one tablespoon of sea salt, just like that. Done. Now we're gonna go ahead and mix up again the salt with the flour, and put the rest of the flour. Let's go and mix it up in an authentic way, like my grandmother, like my grandmother used to do. Done. Like my grandmother, she used to teach me. She always say, Vito, vai, devi impastare con amore e passione, come faccio io. Ecco qua. Quindi mia nonna mi ha insegnato tutti questi trucchetti. My grandmother, she taught me all these little tricks. We can start to go ahead and put it on the counter. Let's make sure we get all the flour from the inside the container. So this is how you make the dough by hands. We go ahead and we flip it over and use your hands, just like that. So we're gonna go ahead and mix the dough for about uh, 15 to 20 minutes. Impasta con amore. Mm. Invece il nonno mi diceva sempre la pasta è come la donna, la devi trattare bene. I'm gonna translate this in English. Uh, my grandfather, instead, he was saying, always the dough is like a woman, so treat them really well. We, have, we mix up the dough for about 15 minutes, really hard. If you, if you don't go really hard, you have to go 20 minutes. At this point, you'll see the dough nice and smooth. So we let it rest for about five minutes, cover. We rest the dough for five minutes just because uh, the more you let it rest, the more the gluten gets stronger. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and grab it from the center and we're gonna make a, like a big ball until the dough is nice and smooth. Uh, the gluten on top will become a little bit more strong and so basically the goal here is to make like a balloon. Done. Make sure you don't break it. Done, at this point, we go ahead and we let it rest for about 15 more minutes and then we're gonna make the ball. Here is how we find the dough. Of course, the structure of the dough is more strong at this point. So now we don't touch it anymore. We're gonna go ahead and cut the dough in uh, four. Just exactly, we try to make it all, all the same, exactly four dough balls. This is the easiest way the easy way how to make the dough, the dough balls. So we're gonna go ahead, flip it over. Best and easy way to make the balls. So very easy, get a spatula, we're gonna go ahead and get the dough. Hands under, we're gonna go and close the dough just like this. So we're gonna, we're gonna keep the top part on top and we're gonna try to make the smooth as possible the dough. Done. I place it there, same thing here. You're gonna go ahead and do all four the same way. We're gonna go and close the bottom part, just like that. So we create a, like a balloon. The dough ball's a little bit big, so if it's too big for you, you go ahead and take off some dough. But the, uh, I'm gonna make some uh, a little bit bigger pizzas. So see this one is a little too big, so we're gonna go ahead and cut off some parts 
of the dough. Four balls, they're a little bit bigger than usual, so this is about 11 ounces. Of course, I'm gonna make the pizza a little bit bigger than usual. Okay, we need a sheet pan just like that. Okay, we're gonna put some flour on the bottom, not too much. And we're gonna place the dough balls on top, the face on top. Remember, the, the, the part that we, that we close, it needs to go on the bottom. So we're gonna place a couple of inches uh, far from, uh, from the sides and a couple of inches far from the, the pizza dough. Done. So when the dough is uh, almost attached together, it's ready. But usually it's gonna take now about four to six hours. So, but we're gonna cover really well. Let's put a little bit of flour on top, just a little bit. This way they don't stick to the plastic. We're gonna let it rest for about four to six hours at room temperature. Let's go home and let's make this pizza. And here we go guys, this is how we find the dough after six long hours. Well, it's not that long, you know. If you wanna make a good pizza, you have to give it the time because good things take time. So, I repeat that this one was made with the most common flour. We are gonna go ahead and make this pizza at home because like you can see, I'm in the, in the regular kitchen. This way uh, is no high temperature oven or something because we're gonna go straight to the point, the best pizza at home. So, the first thing to do here now is to preheat the oven one hour before at the max temperature. Preheat the oven at the max temperature with the bricks or stone or whatever you have to cook the pizza. Leave it inside and warm it up for at least one hour. So I wanna show it to you what I use. You can find those bricks on the link on the description. This is my favorite to cook the pizza at home. Here is we have to take off the plastic really carefully. So we have to cut from the side. So there we go, like you can see, the pizza doesn't stick because we had a little bit of flour before. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, get the dough. Make sure you pay attention to this step. So we're gonna go ahead and have a little bit of flour with a spatula like this. You're gonna go gently, you're gonna go inside under the pizza but make sure the pizza it needs to stay always like this. That's the, this is the most difficult part when you make a pizza. Gently, done. Then you help yourself with your, put it on the, on the, your hand, stick off this. Let's place the dough on the flour. We go ahead and let's go to stretch the pizza. This is how you stretch the dough. You start from the bottom, then you go to the top. Just don't touch the cross, gently, for the first time. Then we go ahead and we flip it over. Again, now we stretch more harder. The dough is full of air. This is unbelievable. Never made the dough with this flour. So now we press a little bit more stronger. If it's sticky, you just put a little bit of flour. Don't be scared. Now it's time to, to stretch. So you press on your right hand and you pull with your left hand. If you wanna learn how to stretch the pizza properly, check out my other videos right here. Now, very important, we're gonna give it the first cook with just tomato sauce. In this case, we're using some uh, tomato, San Marzano tomato sauce. You can find this also on the market Now we're gonna go ahead and put it in the oven. I just got this magic peel here from uh, Humi, amazing. So we're gonna make sure, this step is really easy, but it's really hard at the same time. So you pinch it right here, and then you go ahead and in one shot, you go and you put it in the pizza. So most of your people, or most of the people, they make a mistake because the, the, when they put the pizza on the peel, so this is how you make the pizza larger. You just pinch it, you put your finger under. Pinch your finger under, and then you make the pizza a little bit bigger. Because when you're going to press the crust, what happens is that the crust will not get nice and puffy. 
So done. We have a nice, perfect 12 inches pizza. So we're gonna move it a little bit to make sure, see it's sticky. So we put it down again, put a little bit of flour, just where we stick it from one side, and we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing. Voila. Couple of times, done. So now, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. 12 inches pizza. Go ahead and put it in the oven. Place it in the oven, just like that, in the center. Voila. Now we let it cook until the dough gets a little bit gold color. Okay guys, as you check, the pizza is getting nice and puffy. That's crazy. This, I remember, I remind you, this is the first time that I do this with this flour. So, uh, easy to find any market and I'm very excited to show you this pizza. And now, uh, so we add the, the, just the tomato sauce, it's cooking a little bit gold color, and then we're gonna, for about five minutes, then I'm gonna take it out and add more ingredients to make sure that the mozzarella gets nice and consistent. Because if you put the cheese before, it will bubble and will burn all the cheese. So, let's go. go. Now let's get the, our pizza. Wow, I mean, take a look at this. So we're gonna go ahead and add all the ingredients that we need to put. What I like to do is uh, to put a little bit of uh, olive oil on the crust before we start to add the ingredients to make sure to make the crust a little bit more good. Okay guys, so sorry, but the battery was dead, so I, would, uh, I was not able to uh, show you how I put the mozzarella, but that's okay. And uh, so what I was saying, I like to add uh, just mozzarella and tomato sauce, simple margherita, because that's the pizza that I like. But if you want, you can add whatever you like in this pizza. So uh, we're gonna cook it again until the mozzarella starts to bubble in. That means it's ready. We don't want to uh, we don't want to start to bubble the mozzarella. That's why we don't put the mozzarella before, because otherwise the mozzarella is, get, is gonna burn. It's time to go ahead and cook it again for about a couple of more minutes until the mozzarella starts to bubbling. Nice and soft. Let's go ahead. I just checked, the mozzarella is bubbling, so it's ready, we're gonna take it out. Wow, wow, guys, the pizza. The pizza is ready! Take a look! Now we're gonna go ahead and cut it and let's see the inside. Wow! Nice! Nice and crunchy at the same time. Wow! Nice, soft and crunchy at the same time. Wow! So we're gonna go ahead and add some uh, fresh and nicely basil. It's complete. A little bit of olive oil again, and that's it. That's it, done guys. Leave a thumbs up for now. Nice. Now we're gonna let's go ahead and see the inside of the crust. Let's go. And check out the inside of the crust. I may take a look. Nice and soft. Nice and soft. And amazing and amazing results. So done. Smell it. And tasty. Mm. Tastes really good. Mm. Let me tell you my my let me tell you my answer right now. And of course, like I was saying, uh, my honest opinion on this pizza. Mm. Pizza is really good. For Neapolitan style pizza, it's a little bit uh, too heavy, in my opinion. But uh, it came out really, really good. I mean, you saw the results, you saw how I made them. 
please now it's time that you go ahead and make yourself this pizza and tag me on Instagram Vito Jacopelli and then of course at the end of this video leave a thumbs up and subscribe for supporting and please everyone stay safe at this this time of the year because it's really complicated for everyone thank you so much for keeping supporting and I'll see you at the next one with an amazing video check out my backstage one second okay guys I just checked the la morta halfway then we're gonna take it out aspetta papà so now the pizza this flower it's perfect yeah Chi è papà? La paperella? Sì. No. Reply this uh, amazing... Uh, mm, this amazing pizza and thank you so much for watching from my street Yoko Pelli. Yes. We're gonna eat all this pizza now and uh, please guys stay safe.